happy Sabbath. Good morning. Today, I am starting a new video series called Jesus on Trial. It is my prayer that this video series um, inspires people as to the true value of what Jesus Christ has done for the whole human race and for them personally. It is my sincere desire that I can inspire people with hope and courage and faith and love towards our Saviour through this video series. And it is actually my prayer that this video series becomes more famous than my video on the Mark of the Beast, because the everlasting gospel is so much more important than the Mark of the Beast. Because I've noticed that lots of people come into this message through such videos, but they don't have a true love for our Saviour. And so, it is my prayer that I can glorify Him in everything that I say in this video series. Amen. Let's have a brief word of prayer. Father in heaven, I'm about to undertake a most important work, a work which will allow people to see you as you really are, and for what Christ has done for us as he really did. Please, let my words be your words. Allow me to say everything correctly, not to make grammatical mistakes with the right pronunciation, enunciation and emphasis on the inflections and the emotion in the words so that people really respond to this awesome message about the Son of God. Lord, it's my prayer. But the entire audience would hear your words this day. And I, re I realize, I acknowledge that I shouldn't mingle myself in this work. I pray that I myself would just not be here. But I pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, that you would, you would truly speak through me. So that everyone will see your glory in the name of Jesus Christ I pray this. Amen. Those who are teaching the most solemn message ever given to the world should discipline the mind to comprehend its significance. The theme of redemption will bear the most concentrated study and its depth will never be fully explored. You need not fear that you will exhaust this wonderful theme. Drink deep of the well of salvation. Go to the fountain for yourself, that you may be filled with refreshment, that Jesus may be in you a well of water, springing up into everlasting life. Only Bible truth and Bible religion will stand the test of the judgments. We are not to pervert the word of God to suit our own convenience, our worldly interests, but to honestly inquire, what will Abney do? Ye are not your own, for ye are bought with a price. And what a price! Not with corruptible things as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ. When man was lost, the Son of God said, I will redeem him. 
I will become his surety and substitute. He laid aside his royal robes, clothed his divinity with humanity, stepped down from the royal throne that he might reach the very depth of human woe and temptation, lift up our fallen natures and make it possible for us to be overcomers, the sons of God, the heirs of the eternal kingdom. Shall we then allow any consideration of earth to turn us away from a path of truth? Shall we not challenge every doctrine and theory and put it to the test of God's word? We should not allow any argument of man's to turn us away from a thorough investigation of Bible truth. The opinions and customs of men are not to be received as of divine authority. God has revealed in his word what is the whole duty of man, and we are not to be swayed from the great standard of righteousness. He sent his only begotten Son to be our example, and bade us to hear and follow him. We must not be influenced from the truth as it is in Jesus, because great and professedly good men urge their ideas above the plain statements of the word of God. The work of Christ is to draw men from the false and spurious to the true and the genuine. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. There is no danger of going into error while we follow in the footsteps of the light of the world. We are to work the works of Christ. We must engage the heart and soul in his service. We must search the word of life and present it to others. We must educate the people to realize the importance of its teaching and the danger of deviating from its plain commands. The world's Redeemer was treated as we deserve to be treated, in order that we might be treated as he deserved to be treated. He came to our world and took our sins upon his own divine soul, that we might receive his imputed righteousness. He was condemned for our sins, in which he had no share that we might be justified by his righteousness, in which we had no share. The world's Redeemer gave himself for us. Who was he? The majesty of heaven, pouring out his blood upon the altar of justice for the sins of guilty man. We should know our relationship to Christ and his relationship to us. We are to trust God fully and ask him to supply the least as well as the greatest want. The Lord encourages our confidence and the great proof of our union with Christ and the best manifestation of our love to him is in yielding obedience to his claims. If you have love to Jesus Christ, which is an expression of the life of Christ in the soul, then you will do what he commands you. This is practical religion. Redeemed by the ransom money paid for your souls, you will go forth and show how much you love Jesus by obedience to his commandments. You are to bring forth fruit by doing his commandments, because you are the branches of the living vine. It is his prayer that his joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. What was Christ's joy? It was the joy of saving the lost. The prophet says, he shall see the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, 
His suffering, his agony, his death, were counted by him nothing that souls might be rescued from sin. Whenever there is a soul converted and brought to Jesus Christ, a thrill of joy is felt in heaven. A soul saved, a precious soul snatched from Satan's grasp and given as a precious token to Jesus Christ that he has not suffered and died in vain. And then there is joy and rejoicing in heaven. The lost is found. The dead in trespasses and sins is alive. And Christ prays that this joy may be ours. A joy that is rich, deep, full and abiding. A joy springing from the triumphs of the cross of Christ. I then saw the glorious Redeemer, beautiful and lovely, but he left the realms of glory and came to this dark and lonely world to give his precious life and die the just for the unjust. He bore the cruel mocking and scourging, wore the plaited crown of thorns and sweat great drops of blood in the garden while the burden of the sins of the whole world was upon him. The angel asked, What for? Oh, I saw and knew that it was for us. For our sins he suffered all this, that by his precious blood he might redeem us unto God. 